So in this video, we're going to talk about partial pre-rendering, what it is and how it's different from the way that your app renders right now. We're going to talk about the convention or how you would go about using it today in your app and then some caveats at the end. So let's get started. Let's just start by understanding what it is. Partial pre-rendering is combining static and dynamic content. It allows you to render a route with a static loading shell while keeping some parts dynamic. In other words, you can isolate the dynamic parts of a route. Currently, if you call a dynamic function inside your route, and dynamic functions are things like cookies, headers, the no store, the new no store function, and also if you're uh, reading, for example, the search parameters inside of a page, it will make the entire route dynamic. However, most routes are not fully static or dynamic. There are some static parts to every page and then some dynamic parts to every page. We're going to see this in the context of an e-commerce store in a second, but let's continue here to understand it a bit or contrast it with the way that your app renders right now, and then we will jump into um, the examples. By the way, uh, about the dynamic rendering versus the static rendering in Next.js, I do have a video on the channel. I will link it in the description, kind of contrasting these two together. We're talking about rendering statically or pre-rendering statically at build time, where you would just serve up static sites when somebody requests for your page, or versus or in, in contrast with dynamic rendering, which happens at request time when a user is actually hitting your site. So partial pre-rendering allows the static portion of a route to be pre-rendered and served from the cache, which is from the edge network, from the edge CDN, globally distributed, close to your users, with dynamic holes or parts or slots available for that dynamic uh, sections to be streamed in once um, the user actually requests for the site, but all of which is in single HTTP request. So let me just read this one more time. P partial pre-rendering allows a static portion of a route to be pre-rendered and served from the cache with dynamic holes streamed in all in a single HTTP request. And then once the data is loaded, we're going to replace the fallback or replace that loading skeleton or the holes with the actual data from the dynamic sections. Therefore, when a user visits a route, a static shell is served, ensuring a fast initial load. The shell then leaves holes where dynamic content will load asynchronously, and then the async holes are streamed in in parallel, reducing the overall load time of the page. Partial pre-rendering combines ultra-quick static edge delivery because it's from the CDN, the distributed globally edge network of let's say Vercel that you've used to deploy your Next.js app to with fully dynamic capabilities and has the potential of becoming the default rendering model of web applications in future. This is also another blog post by the Vercel team. There's a link here that you can also click and read. Now, how would you go about using partial pre-rendering in your app? Now, behind the scenes, partial pre-rendering is leveraging concurrent APIs in React and uses suspense to defer rendering parts of our application until later. The fallback is embedded into the initial static file along with other static content at build time and the rest is postponed until the user requests the route. So again, the fallback is when you're using suspense and we're going to see how you're going to wrap the dynamic parts or components of your page with suspense. Now, if you're not familiar with Suspense, I think I have a video on the channel about Suspense and streaming. Also, I'm going to link that in the description, but Suspense receives a fallback prop, which is going to be rendered while we're awaiting any asynchronous task that's happening inside of that component within the Suspense. So the fallback is then embedded into the static file along with other static content at build time while the rest or the dynamic section is then postponed to be rendered at request time. As I mentioned, suspense is used as a boundary between the static and dynamic parts of your route. And the great thing about partial pre-rendering is that you don't need to change your code to use it. 
as long as you're using suspense to wrap the dynamic parts of your routes, Next.js will know which part of your route is static and which are dynamic. Now, how will we use this today? Well, it is a still an experimental feature, so it is only available on Next Canary version. So you would have to install that version of Next. Then you need to enable the experimental feature inside your Next config by passing this PPR, that stands for partial pre-rendering to true. Then once you've done that, you would want to move data fetching down to the component that needs it, thus isolating which part of, parts of your application should be dynamic, then wrap that part and that component with a suspense, and that's all you need to do to use partial pre-rendering today. Now, there are some caveats, as I mentioned. First off, it is still experimental. That was introduced in Next.js 14, not suitable for production environment, but it may give you the mental model of how you would want to design your data fetching and your components for future when this feature becomes stable. Also, it does not yet apply to client-side navigation. So this is for the initial request that com comes in from the server. You get the shell, and then the dynamic parts are going to show the fallback until the data is loaded, and then it just streams in the data there. But if you're using the client-side navigation, it doesn't work with this whole partial pre-rendering yet. There, the team is actively working on it, so we're going to have to wait as this develops and matures over time. Now, another thing or another limitation that I don't think it's going to change in future is that partial pre-rendering is designed for Node.js runtime. So using the edge runtime is not needed when you can instantly serve the static shell. So it's good to know that partial pre-rendering only works with Node.js runtime. And the reasoning is that if you're already sending the static shell or the static parts of a route from the global CDN very fast to the user, and then wait for the data to be fetched in parallel and stream those dynamic parts in, there's really no need for the edge runtime, which promised to make this process faster or the rendering faster, which sometimes can be counterproductive because if you are using the edge compute to be closer to your users, but your database is actually farther away from that source, you're going to introduce some latency by running on the edge or bringing or moving the compute closer to the user and farther away from your database. It's better to be closer to your database, even if you're not as close to your users, because in this new model, you're going to serve up the static shell first very fast from the global edge CDN to the user, and then stream in the dynamic parts, which is going to result in a faster performance than if you were to move the compute alone to your users or close to your users and leave it far away with a bigger latency to your database. That's a topic for another video for sure. But before we wrap up, I want to show you some examples. So let's say we have this e-commerce shop that we have created in previous videos. Now here we have mostly the static parts of a site. The only thing here dynamic would be the cart and the user. So you can see most of this page can be served up statically and the dynamic parts can come in. Similarly, if we go to this all products page where you can see this layout on the side, this would be the same. And the only thing changing would be what I see here. So again, you get the idea of how you can use this. Or if we are inside of a single product, everything's static here, but maybe the cart and the currently active user or logged in user would be the dynamic parts or if you're showing any recommendations at the bottom, which is an example uh, where you can find in Vercel documentation where this is another um, template for an e-commerce shop. As you can see here, this pink dots are representing the dynamic parts. So you have the cart, you have the recommended section that's customized to the user and then some reviews specific to this product. So the rest are going to be static and these parts are going to have a fallback as I refresh this page if you look at these parts these are going to be showing the fallback while the data is streaming in from the server and also from this section down here so again we're going to see the static shell served up very quickly but if you pay attention to this top part this just is a static for everybody so this comes in in the initial request while we wait for the rest to stream in from the server and that's a wrap for this video, folks. 
partial pre-rendering is a pretty cool feature that allows you to combine static and dynamic content in a single request on a specific route. Right now, you're either statically rendering a route or turning it into dynamic if you need any dynamic data fetching. But this is going to allow you to even break down this dynamic versus or the combination down into component level instead of the route level, which is pretty cool. It's still experimental, so we're going to have to wait to see how this develops. But it is good to know what's coming down the line, thinking about the data fetching strategies, moving them closer to the component that needs them, wrapping those components with suspense to clear the boundary between the dynamic parts and the static parts of your application would be the way to go in future. If you have any questions, like always, hit them up in the comments for me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.